A species under threat, a multi-million dollar fishery is on the verge of extinction, warns a World Wildlife Fund. Politics and greed to blame, they say. This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the program. I'm Nick Clark. Valuable but increasingly rare. Japanese taste for the Mediterranean bluefin tuna has sparked a battle over the future of a crucial fishery and the survival of a species. The World Wildlife Fund says serious overfishing has left the bluefin on the brink of extinction. Some say they're being caught faster than they can reproduce. We'll be discussing the implications and the arguments. But first, this from the coast of Spain. Another day, another catch. For 3,000 years and more, the fishing fleets of the Mediterranean have put out to sea. But today, a new boat leaves port. World Wildlife Fund scientists in search of a fish once so abundant it fed the Roman legions. Now so overfished, said to be on the brink of collapse. Lures are attached and lines are fed out. The target, bluefin tuna. So the idea is, once a fish is caught, it'll be brought on board and these special data recording tags will, believe it or not, be actually attached to the bit and help the whole process of giving an idea of precisely what the bluefin tuna is all about. Problem is, you've got to catch one first. After hours at sea, suddenly the hallmark boiling swirl of feeding tuna and what's become the gold bullion of the ocean is hooked. A 20-minute fight and a 30 kilo juvenile bluefin is hauled on board. Covering the eyes calms the fish and quickly an incision is made and the tracker tag is inserted into the belly of the tuna, aiming to boost knowledge and help preserve a species. The wound is stitched and the bluefin returned to the sea where it quickly recovers. The breeding stock of the bluefin tuna in the Mediterranean is collapsing in front of our eyes right now. The situation is clearly out of control, so what we need is a complete closure. We need some time for, uh, for some order to be put, some control to be, uh, to be put in, the, in, this, in this fishery. And in the meantime, we need a uh, suspension of international trade for this species, which is uh, the real uh, driver of this situation. Here's the opposing view. A tuna farm, six kilometers offshore, run by Balfego, Spain's biggest bluefin outfit. Cages full of thousands of wild fish being fattened. A subaqua bullet to the head and 300 kilograms of prime tuna is hauled from the deep. Like 90% of the Mediterranean catch, this fish will end up in Japanese restaurants as high-grade sushi. Now we're talking big money here. This fish alone is worth up to $10,000. And Balfago say in these cages, in these pens around here, they've got up to 8,000 fish. And if you do the maths, that represents tens of millions of dollars worth of tuna. Balfago's fleet is permitted to fish 1,000 tons a year. They say quotas have worked already and the stock is actually increasing. We have the scientific proof that the tuna population is not about to collapse, at least in our part of the Mediterranean, well protected by the Spanish government. But countries like France and Italy have to cut their fishing fleets to reflect the quotas, Libya and Turkey too. Along the coast, the daily auction in full swing. The only tuna, the cheaper, more plentiful, albacore and bonito. When available, bluefin is out of most people's league and there are strict rules governing its sale. All fish legally caught has to have a certificate with the date of capture and the name of the boat. If I don't have the name of the boat, I won't buy it. There is though, no doubt, a huge amount of illegal fishing of bluefin in the med. And now the WWF are pushing for international trade in the fish to be banned altogether, putting it on the same level as the blue whale. Balfago point to their experimental spawning program as a sign of their commitment to sustainability. One thing is evident, it is in no one's environmental or economic interest for the bluefin to disappear. 
Well, let's discuss this whole issue. Joining us now are our guests in Rome, Alessandro Buzzi. He's a biologist at Fedo Cubesca. That's an association representing the Italian fishing industry. In Seattle, Sunny Lewis joins us. She's the editor-in-chief of the Environment News Service. And in London, we have Willie McKenzie, who's an oceans campaigner at Greenpeace. Let's start with uh, you, Willie uh, McKenzie. Uh, what, in your view, is the current status of the bluefin tuna in the Mediterranean? It's drastically bad. I mean, WWF earlier this year suggested that the bluefin spawning population could crash in as little as three years. And there are other people out there who actually think it already has crashed. We're hearing a lot more reports that a lot of undersized tuna, uh, young tuna are being caught and they're taken to, to farms and fed up, uh, to, to fattened up to, to, so they're big enough to, to, um, to be traded. But it's a really bad situation and I think that we know now when we see countries like France and President Sarkozy standing up saying it's, you know, it's time to do something about bluefin tuna, we know that people know there's a problem and it's a, it's a pretty urgent problem and that's why we're backing a, a, a full international trade ban on bluefin tuna. And what are the implications of this species going extinct? I mean, not only in terms of trade, but also in terms of the, the marine ecosystem, if you like. Well, you know, any, any species going extinct is, is, is a bad idea, and I think that we've probably assumed that, in say, whether it's a blue whale or whether it's a tiger or whatever it is. Now, the difficulty we have, of course, is that any species at sea is much less out of the public consciousness, and it's much less easy to get people to care about it. It's also much more difficult to count them and see them. Um, but any, you know, overfishing, like any sort of overhunting or overexploitation, dramatically changes the ecosystem. Uh, estimates are that about 90% of the big fish species in the seas, things like sharks, tuna, cod, um, have disappeared over the kind of past 50 or 60 years. So we're having a dramatic effect on the ecosystem. And that changes different things in different places. Some places we see lots more kind of jellyfish and other places we see kind of an abundance of, of, of kind of shrimps or something else. But we are dramatically changing those ecosystems. Okay, well, let's bring in Alessandro Bussi, uh, representing Italian fisheries. Um, what about that viewpoint? What do you think? Would you say that, I mean, it seems pretty clear, doesn't it, that the bluefin is in decline? Yes, that is clear, and we often, we, we actually don't say that uh, the problem doesn't exist at all, of course. Um, but I would like to point something, um, that the, the question is, is that um, ICAT, which is the International Commission for the Conservation of Atlantic Tunas, um, has its own uh, scientific committee, which works basing on specific technical data, analyzing this data and proposing strategies and uh, approaches to uh, overcome this problem. The question is that more than once this committee expressed its disappointment uh, concerning the quality of this data. In particular, they're saying that uh, there's a lack of data and uh, lack of uh, specific data and, uh, and also the, mm, uh, the, the lack of, qu of quality, in a sense, of this data. So the question is that um, we are trying to do uh, an approach, to put, put together an approach on this, on this uh, sector, basing on, on data that are not um, uh, reli reliable. Um, so the, uh, until now, the um, ICAT uh, proposed and adopted a, percussion, a percussionally uh, approach, which is something, of course, that you can imagine damaging the sector. Okay, sector. Would you, Mr. Butti, um, would you agree with the premise so presented by Balfago, the Spanish fishery in that film, that, um, that some countries may yeah. be disregarding or even exceeding quotas? Well, that, that is, of course, not true. We say it's not true because the data we have uh, are not in that direction. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the stock, uh, I was listening to, to that, Spain, to that uh, contribute, that Spanish one, and he was saying that the stock is not so bad as um, people commonly think. And we have uh, an evidence in that direction, is that our fishermen uh, only have about, um, let's say now, about two uh, months um, of, like, as a period to fish. Uh, but the main constraint in catching tunas in that period is not uh, the period itself, uh, because they, they really need uh, a small period of time to catch them, okay, only well let's, a few days let's throw this the across the weather conditions are good. Sure, let's throw this across to Sonny Lewis in Seattle. The viewpoint here is that the, the data is flawed. 
Uh, well, I can just tell you that we, as the Environment News Service, have been reporting on this issue for at least five years. This is not a situation that just occurred this year. This is something that has been developing over time. And uh, data by the European Commission Scientific Committee uh, says that this has been happening for a long time. We can see fewer and fewer tunas are coming into the Mediterranean because the large ones are being caught. And there are fewer large ones now than there have been in the past. And uh, so I, while there is question, I'm sure, over the scientific data, it usually comes from people who want to continue fishing. And uh, people who want to conserve the species have different data. So it's a saw-off as to who you believe. Absolutely. Okay, well, thanks, Sunny. Let's just see what sort of level of importance this issue is regarded as by organizations like Greenpeace and uh, the World Wildlife Fund and many others, indeed. Uh, the move to ban fishing for bluefin has been put forward to CITES. That's a Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. Basically, it's an international body which attempts to ensure trade in uh, wild animals and plants does not threaten their survival. Roughly 5,000 animal species are protected by CITES, and if it's approved, the bluefin would join a celebrated list of protected species, including the lion, the elephant, the rhinoceros, and those mainly endangered uh, due to hunting. Uh, the leatherback turtle, also made vulnerable by chemical and physical pollution, and even the blue whale, which is threatened by hunting. And that's the kind of level of importance a bluefin holds in some eyes. Uh, Alessandro Buzzi, it sounds as if a temporary ban, at the very least, would give the bluefin a bit of a breather and a chance to recover. Yes, that's right. We, as, as the Italian government, uh, we, we proposed a, a, ban, a temporary ban of two years uh, to, the, to, to ICAT. Uh, so that could be one, uh, one approach that, that may be used. Uh, we, are, we, we say it's, it could be uh, a solution, a temporary solution. Um, but we, um, I want to, to, point, to um, point out that, of course, we're, we are the first, uh, depending on, the, on, that, on that stock, that we are interested in maintaining the stock and preserve it over the year. Uh, so this, this is part of, we also, we're working as an associa association uh, in a research program for the um, artificial reproduction of tunas. And this year, for the second year, the first in the Mediterranean, uh, we obtain about 50 million uh, of uh, tuna's eggs. Uh, so the, um, we are trying year by year to improve these uh, technical skills in order to be able one day to restock the natural stock of tunas with the artificial reproduction. That, that is a big challenge for us. For us. OK, but let's bring in uh, Willie McKenzie from Greenpeace. Be, I mean. There you go. It seems like efforts are being made, at least, to try and restock uh, the numbers of bluefin. That would be efforts to try and redress the damage that's already been done, that's just been admitted, obviously. I think it's interesting when you listen to the, the fishermen, that the fishermen around the world, and it doesn't matter what they're fishing, will always tell you it's not as bad as everyone tells you it is, and it's somebody else that's causing the problem. Now, I mean, there's a, there's a reason why people talk about the fisherman's tale of the one that got away and, and things not being quite believable. Now, the fishermen will also tell you that they have no interest in over, over exploiting a stock or fishing themselves out of business. Now, that, that would, in, in fact, make sense. You would think that would be the case. But we've seen time and time again that that isn't the case. And it's quite alarming when you hear Alexandra saying, you know, that, that we, we worry about the science. Now, no science is perfect, but if you have science and you're a little bit worried about it, then you should actually be more precautionary. But what we actually have in Bluefin Tuna is a situation where ICAT, which um, an independent review, um, which was uh, started by ICAT, decided was uh, an international disgrace. ICAT actually set levels above what the scientists recommend. And then there's rampant overfishing and illegal fishing on top of that. So when, when Alessandro says there isn't any of that going on, that's not true. And we've seen that most recently. We've seen, we've seen the, the French Navy has exposed that in, with the Turkish fleet. OK, so well, let's put that to Alessandro. Let's here. put that to Alessandro right now. Those figures yeah. seem pretty conclusive, yeah. don't they? Yeah, that, that's, that was very interesting what he said. I agree that the, the, the problem, actually, uh, that we, we cannot not consider is the illegal fishing and, un and also unreported fishing. 
which is something that we must consider if we have to do uh, a methodological approach and, and, um, and a long-term, uh, uh, how you say, a long-term uh, yeah, long, approach long -term and ban? resolution. Okay. Yeah, no, 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 a, a long-term uh, results, long-term results. If you have to point out, if you have to think of a, a long-term approach. So uh, illegal fishing is something that we first want to uh, fight and we believe is, is the main thing that also government has to help us reduce. It's, uh, you, you, you just try to think that over the six years, the um, Italian fishermen had to uh, uh, cut about 50% of their quotas of catching of the ca uh, tuna catches in the Mediterranean. And uh, they also had uh, to uh, small down the sizes of the tuna that they catch, which is now 30 kilos. Uh, so that means that each tuna had the opportunity at least once to reproduce. Okay, um, let, let's let's go across also, the Atlantic uh, now. All the Sorry to jump in, Alessandro, but we need to bring in uh, Sunny yeah. Lewis in uh, in Seattle. Uh, it's interesting, isn't it? Because we're talking about CITES, the CITES listing there, and in the last week, the European Commission has pulled back from uh, its effort to add bluefin to the list of endangered species. If the situation is so serious, uh, why isn't more effort being made at governmental level? Well, that's interesting, Nick. There are three different ways that these tuna can be, the fishing of these tuna can be regulated. We could have a CITES proposal, but the European Union last week split sharply on this and no proposal was put forward. Uh, they have till October 17th to put a proposal forward, but it doesn't look likely that they're going to do that uh, this time around, and CITES only meets once every three years. There is also the ICAT regulatory process, and they are meeting in November in Brazil. Uh, so we could uh, regulate it at the ICAT level. And in addition, uh, the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization has uh, got 91 countries to agree on the wording for a new treaty that would um, put inspectors in all ports and make sure that boats coming into the ports have uh, no illegal tunas on board. But one thing I want to just make clear is that the, the fishing done on bluefin is done in response to demand of consumers to eat this fish. And if consumers decided that they didn't want to eat this fish, we wouldn't see uh, the sushi bars buying such large, expensive tuna. They would buy something else that would sell better. And so it really is a matter of educating the consumer to know that this is their issue, that they can decide to eat something else. And if they do that, the pressure on bluefin will go down to the point where they might be able to reproduce and then uh, come back and okay. come off the brink of extinction. Willie McKenzie, the onus is on the consumer. I think there is a large onus on the consumer. Just to pick up on what Sonny said, I mean, the, the situation in Europe is, is really interesting because actually three quarters of the European Union did vote in favour of a ban, but it was blocked by a minority of countries which just so happen to be the very countries that are fishing bluefin towards extinction. Now, if you're a Eurosceptic, that's that all the ammunition you need. The people who are doing the damage are the people who get to block it. It just doesn't make any sense. And we have to uh, pour a bit of scorn onto Nicolas Sarkozy here for for flipping his vote uh, in a way that really didn't make any sense. But in terms of the consumer, absolutely, there wouldn't be a, a trade in this stuff if it wasn't for consumer demand. And we can have an impact on that across the world in places like Nobu. Nobu shouldn't be selling bluefin tuna, they know that. If you speak to them privately, they'll say that this That's is Nobu, a, an the issue they'd like to go away. Nobu, the restaurant, which you know has, has um, venues in London, it has venues in um, in Dubai, in Milan, uh, and many, and many, of course, in, in, the, in the United States, as well as in, in, in Japan and Hong Kong. They do put a warning um, on their menus, so don't they? Well, only in the UK. Uh, in the US, they'll quite blatantly tell you it's bluefin, and in Hong Kong, they'll tell you they're not serving it because it's full of mercury. So there's an interesting one. OK, I just want to move uh, on a bit, Willie. I just want to ask you something else. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, they say in the European Union, there's good policy, there's bad policy, and there's fisheries policy. It sounds like another fine mess, doesn't it? <laughs> 
Um, that's, that sounds quite accurate, actually. I mean, the, the big problem that we have is that the, the very limited interests of fishing seem to trump um, environment and common sense in, in, in every, every forum. Um, and it just doesn't make any sense to anyone else. I mean, we, I, I have a lot of faith in the UK government that they have a very strong position on bluefin tuna and really want to do something. We've seen our own fisheries minister stand up and say that he doesn't think we should be selling endangered species in restaurants in this country. And, and I, I would guess I would pass this back over the Atlantic because I think that because the EU has failed here to take a, take a proactive stance and because we see this block for, um, it coming from the Mediterranean, we see all this uh, effort coming from Japan to lobby in another direction, I really would like to see the United States come out and actually take a proactive stance on bluefin tuna and I'm really encouraged to see that some of the re recreational fishermen and conservationists out there calling for a ban on CITES. Okay, not going immediately across the Atlantic, now going south down to Rome. Let's uh, ask Alessandro, uh, do you feel that there's any kind of, any way, any middle way here, any room for middle ground that could satisfy both sides of the argument? Well, of course, in, in any matter, there's a middle ground that we have to, of course, we have to uh, address to and try to reach because uh, we, we can't forget that uh, this sector um, is, is important, socially important for historically for, um, for Italy, for example, the fishing of tuna. Uh, started started thousands of years ago, and people depend on that on that activity for many years, and still now. Uh, but now uh, we only have in Italy, for example, 30 about 30 boats fishing. Um, each one of that, taking uh, in consideration the quota that they have, the catching quota, they only can fish fish about uh, 3,000 uh, fish each, um, which. Uh, considering an, uh, an average weight of one fish of about 100 kilos, uh, which I would like to, to point out that a fish of 100 kilo uh, had the opportunity to reproduce more than once. So uh, that is a contribute to the um, breeding stock. Okay, uh, so Sonny Lewis in Seattle, where now for the effort to protect the bluefin? It certainly sounds as if you know, our, our guest in Italy is saying that you know, efforts are being made, that uh, the number of boats is reducing. Uh, there is some success. What about the future now? Well, when CITES meets in March in Doha, it may not consider a proposal to ban, uh, to place the bluefin tuna on one of its protected lists, either Appendix 1, which is the most protection, or some of the lesser protected lists. But public opinion may start changing because of this debate happening now. We at the Environment News Service have seen that over the years, when public opinion starts to uh, gather steam behind an issue. It may take several meetings of CITES at uh, two and a half to three year intervals to allow for enough public opinion to gather, to have a proposal approved. Uh, that was the case with the elephant. And uh, so now elephants are protected on the CITES list. But for years they were not, while uh, advocates were trying to gather enough public opinion to place them on that list. And that may be the situation with bluefin. But in the interim, if there are bans that, for temporary bans that are placed voluntarily, and fisher, fishermen allow these uh, temporary respites for the, the tuna, there may be no need to place them on a CITES list. OK, well, that CITES meeting is, as you say, here in Doha, and we on Al Jazeera will be following the story of the bluefin tuna uh, as that meeting draws closer. That's all we've got time for. Thanks, everyone, for discussing this issue on Inside Stories. Sonny Lewis, Alexandre Boussi, and uh, Willie McKenzie, thanks very much indeed. Thank and thank you for watching the show. We welcome your comments and suggestions. Please just email them to us at insidestory at aljazeera.net. From me, Nick Clark, it's goodbye.